Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. It's hard to fathom, but it was only two years ago that I had the privilege and the honor of meeting Erin. I was still new in our parish, and she was new to the island. She and Grigsby had shown up for worship, cute couple, and they were just so easy to get to know. You know, the sort of, sort of folks that you want to get to know. Well, Erin asked shortly after coming a couple times if she could meet with me. I'm a pastor. These things are fairly normal. So I thought, great, let's talk. So we set a time. She came to my office, and I was simply blown away. Erin wanted to share her journey with me, the journey that she didn't necessarily want the world to know at that point, the new world on Galveston at least, that she was dealing with brain cancer. The shocking diagnosis, the emergency care, she told me the stories and the aftermath, including words that she said where the doctor was saying that there may not be much of a quality of life, the idea that she may not walk, all these uncertainties. I was in shock. How could this quite capable and vibrant young woman sitting before me be a patient who had been given such a grim outlook? Erin was definitely not the cancer and nor was she going to be defined by that insidious disease. Erin was anything but easygoing when it came to her life. She was a fighter and a woman who loved to live. And she was vibrant and she was filled with a deep joy an accomplished professional in a field that used her gifts, that drew on that deep joy, because joy is tied with compassion and nurturing, she was not going to be held down by that little tumor in her head. One of her accomplishments in the last two years was landing a full-time job as a counselor. It really wasn't about the job. It was more about the achievement. After all of that grim news, all of those questionable futures, she was able to return to full-time work, not just living each day vibrantly, but living each day productively. She refused to be defined by what was going on in her brain. She proved she could do it. She pushed herself beyond the boundaries of what others thought she might be able to accomplish. And she thrived in who she truly was. But there's another reality. In the background, the nasty tumor was always present. She would let me know when there was going to be a test, one of those checkups up at MD Anderson. We'd pray, we'd wait, we'd anxiously then hear the report. Things are stable, but not all the reports came back that way. She was always conscious of how she was feeling. Was that moment of being off balance just a misstep or was there something else going on? Was that bungled word just a tongue twisty, twister or a deeper issue? Since the first diagnosis, the cancer was simply part of her life, but not the definer of her life. Here in Galveston, Erin became active in the life of our parish. She brought her entire self into the life of our faith community, and we are better for it. She gathered around word and sacrament, the word of promise, 
the word of hope, of a God who refuses to let us go, of a God who is stronger than death, of a God who breathes love and calls us into that. And she used her gifts. She got many of us up off our rear ends to get better together. Though some of us were not as faithful as others in that. She didn't judge, though, but rather accepted people where they were at in their physical lives, in their lives as a whole, and she encouraged them to be their best. She encouraged them to grow and to get moving. She brought about the very first turkey trot on Galveston Island, let alone in Galveston County. It was fun. And we had a bunch of people show up, and then we had some people from the community who started throwing money at it. And we weren't quite sure what to do with that at that moment, but it was an overwhelming joy last Thanksgiving. It was a wonderful time. She simply shared her joy of living and loving with others. In the last year, one of her personal challenges that she set for herself was, for a period of time at least, to meet someone new every day. Someone mentioned that, one of our, one of our presenters. She would see someone she did not know, and she would simply introduce herself, and she would share her, her point, her mission. And she met them with who they were, where they were, and was excited to connect her life story with their life story, and of course, to get a selfie. But that's maybe no surprise to us, is it? That vibrancy and joy of life. Anchoring Aaron in all of this was a deep sense of God's love for her life. She prayed for healing, and she hoped, and she trusted that no matter what, God was going to be there. Aaron fought till the very end, yet her faith also informed her reality, too. She knew the day would come. It's just a simple reality. Each of us is born and each of us will die. And the number of days is not promised. What was promised is eternal life. Aaron trusted in God's promise in Jesus that death is swallowed up in victory, that sin is forgiven and removed as far as the east is from the west through Jesus' death on the cross, and that death is but the gate into eternal life. Now, Aaron was not necessarily going to talk about all this. She was going to hope she was going to fight, and she was going to keep going as long as she could keep going. Yet her faith held her, even when the harder moments came. Did she question why? Absolutely. Wouldn't we all? Isn't that normal? There's nothing wrong with questioning or even yelling out, it's not fair. One of the gifts that Erin has given us to her family and friends is that post late in March. At this point, there were all kinds of side effects going on from the tumor, uncertainty about what the plan for moving forward was going to be. There was talk of a study about chemo. There was all this uncertainty, and she was living in the day-to-day -day with all of the hardship of that and she posted a song. We heard it just a couple moments ago. The song vocalizes a person looking toward a future with a tough-looking road ahead. There was no promise that the road would go where the person wanted. But there on the road, there in the darkest of moments, their God is present overwhelming me with peace, as the words say. 
God overwhelms our fears with peace. Erin shared this song as it was resonating in her life and in her soul. The road ahead was bleak. Even though hundreds, thousands were praying for physical healing, the road ahead was becoming a bit more clear. And it was not the one that any of us would have chosen. And on Sunday, April 29th, Aaron reached the healing. As she breathed her last, as the small insidious tumors which would not cease did their due, God was there, welcoming her into eternal life and rest. True healing, as death was swallowed up in victory, as resurrection arose upon her, released from the pain and the fear and the struggles and the uncertainties, released into the freedom of life that has no end, released from not being able to walk straight or without much assistance, from double vision and the struggle to find words, released into freedom that rests in the grace of God, released into the love of God. Aaron trusted in Jesus, and it is Jesus who walked a bleak road leading to a cross where he died to take away sin, to give us the certainty of eternal life and the promise that the things of this world are not the things that control us. He came into this world offering love, and he was taken to a cross and when death looked like it had won, God raised his son forever. Death was swallowed up in victory. Sin, that which separates humans from one another and separates us from God, was destroyed, and God breathed a loud cry of eternal life. As we gather in this place, we gather with our deepest sorrow ever so near. This amazing daughter of God has touched our lives. Just look around and see the mix of people from I am not even sure how many states. From across this whole nation, people have gathered here to celebrate and give thanks for her life because she has touched our lives. And we are sad. And we may have questions Yet God, the one who comforted Aaron, is present comforting us in the words of promise that are spoken through the ages, in the hugs and in the fellowship. God meets us where we are on this road. Here the path is not what we wanted, not one that we'd ever choose, but God is here with words of hope and peace and promise. God invites us to keep walking for we're not alone and to allow God to walk and perhaps even carry us at times, but to get off our rears and keep walking, keep running, remembering and giving thanks for Aaron's special place in our lives. How simple it would have been for your life to never have intersected with errands. Yet it did. And what a gift. Grigsby, my friend, the path ahead of you, I want you to remember you're not alone. You have exemplified what a husband is to be. You have loved her with a love which would not let her go. You gave her a gift every day of being present and being real. Your tenderness and your care is a witness to what love can be. 
as an, I'm not part of your marriage, but I'm thankful because I have seen that love. The days ahead will be tough, but you're not alone. You've got all of these people out here who will not let you go. And you've got a God who's there as your strength. You, her family, you guys have been through this too. And you've been there and you've worked with her and prayed for her and hoped for her. You're not alone on this road either. Our God is present with comfort and with the promise. One, one day, we will be reunited with those who have gone before us. It's good because she's practicing that first mile in multiple miles. If there is running in heaven, she's handling that for us. She'll be ready to get us moving when that day comes. Your friends, Aaron's life has given you a gift. And I agree with the speaker who was saying about living out our way of legacy now, allowing that to shape how we live. St. Paul wrote another word, one another that we need to hear. It comes from his second letter to Timothy. Paul writes, as for me, I'm already being poured out like a libation and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. From now on there is reserved for me the crown of righteousness which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. May we each run that race. May our hearts and minds keep longing for the Lord's appearing. May God's comfort meet us in our moments of joy and in sorrow in this life. And may we be filled with peace, overwhelmed by peace. And may we dare to boldly live love remembering Aaron and celebrating the fullness of life that's always just this, a pure gift. Thanks be to God. Amen.